Ninja Trader's order flow plus suite has a lot of really, really great features, including the information that you can get on an order flow footprint chart. And that looks something like this. It's a really great tool to help us see where all of the aggressive orders are being placed in the market so we can get some strategies from that. And I'm going to show you how to set this up in Ninja Trader. It does require the order flow plus suite that you need either with a monthly subscription or a lifetime license. And as long as you have that, you can set up this chart exactly how I have it. So I'll show you how to do that right now. If you find value in this video and want to help support the channel, in addition to liking and subscribing, you can use the links and discount codes in the description to get a discount on things like prop accounts and tools, as well as support the channel so we can host more giveaway accounts and keep bringing really great content. You're also welcome to join us in our free Discord if you want to keep the conversation going. All right, so here is Ninja Trader. And I really just wanna focus on the chart. So I've turned everything else off. We just need to go to new and get a chart. Now, of course, the first thing that we need to do is tell it what kind of data series we're gonna look at. I'm gonna focus on the ES futures right now. I find that the ES futures, because it has such great strong volume, even compared to the NASDAQ and the micro contracts, that it's really the ideal way to watch the index futures. So when you first add the asset, it's probably going to automatically load a minute chart, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for volumetric. So the volumetric data is going to specifically be analyzing the data. And I'll show you that more when I can kind of explain what's on the chart in a very specific way that helps us see where all of these aggressive orders are. So then just like on a candlestick chart, we can decide what kind of period we want. I usually watch the five minute. The one minute works pretty great too, but I'm going to leave it on the five minute for now. This is going to load a lot of data. So you, you're not going to want to be loading 30 days of data or anything like that. I tend to keep this pretty small. So three is fine for now. And then we'll start here so I can go through and show you what all of these additional little things are. So here's our volumetric chart. And I think mine is set to automatically load some other indicators. So I'm going to go ahead and clear those off real quick. And here's a completely plain five minute volumetric chart for the ES futures. It's really hard to see all of this stuff right now, but if we zoom in, you'll start to see these numbers forming on the chart. And what these are is where the, really where the market orders are, where the aggressive orders are in the market. So you can have aggressive orders or you can have passive orders. Aggressive orders are gonna be the market orders where someone wants in really, really fast. Basically, you're gonna have two kind of participants in the market and as a result, really two kinds of orders. So basically the market orders are the aggressive aggressors, however you wanna put it, those are the aggressive orders that we're gonna be looking for here. There's also limit orders and those are passive buyers that are sitting waiting. And we can talk about that in a little bit, but first I wanna go through and help you kinda of understand what we're looking at. So when you have a DOM and you have a price level, you are going to be matched diagonally and not on a price level because buyers and sellers get matched diagonally across the bid ask spread and not straight across the, the market maker is in the middle. The market maker is in the middle of the bid and the ask. And so these orders are being matched diagonally. So when we analyze the trades that are going across the bid ask spread, we can look and see which side the aggressors are, the market orders, and that'll let us know if it's buy volume or sell volume. So that's what we're seeing on this chart. We're seeing if the there's a lot of sell volume or buy volume, and this is giving you the actual order number, the number of orders. And the ones that are highlighted here are gonna be the point of control. So this is where the highest number is. But let's go look into more of these uh, settings. And uh, this is the data series. So this is the data series window that we started in. I find it easier to actually have the chart up so that we can uh, actually see what these are in real time when we hit apply. 
Okay, one of the things that I like to have on is to center the open close bar. I don't know why, but when the bar is over here on the side, it just is not quite as easy for me to understand. I like having the bar in the middle to really show me that we're comparing the bid and the ask across this bar. For me, that just makes more sense. You can also show his profile. I don't use this, but what this will do is it'll give you larger little bars to the left and the right to, sh to show you relatively how many orders were at this price level. Again, I find this to be a little bit too much. You can also turn off that outline. We'll get to that in a little bit, but I like to just keep this really simple and have these little boxes. You can also show the volume and what that's going to do is add this volume right here. So this is the volume at each price level. Again, I like to keep this as clean as possible because I end up adding some other things later. So I have this turned off. Okay, the other thing that I really like to turn on is showing the imbalance. So if I check this box, we're going to get some other uh, information that we need to fill out here. But what that's going to do is turn on when we have a really strong ratio of buyers to sellers or sellers to buyers. And what I like to do is use an imbalance ratio of three. So what that's going to mean is when we have three times as many buyers as sellers, or on the flip side, three times as many sellers as buyers, it's going to use this alert color and the imbalance mode is diagonal, like we were talking about earlier. Earlier, And then the minimum delta for the imbalance is just going to be, uh, it's going to ignore the really super flat candles that aren't moving any price in either direction because the delta is the cumulative. So we're taking the number of cells and we're subtracting it from the number of buys. Mm -hmm. And if that number is positive, we have a positive delta. If it's negative, we have a negative delta. So positive would be more strong on, this, on the buy side and negative would be more strong on the sell side. So I keep this pretty low. Some of the other platforms I've seen have this cranked up a lot, but I don't really bother with that. So when we separate it to where we're only looking for uh, that imbalance of 300%, so three times, it's going to take a lot of that kind of noise out and really let us focus on some of these main levels. Okay, one of the main things that this color dominant side does is I told you earlier that this yellow highlighted is the point of control. So that's where the highest number of buyers and sellers were. So we're comparing this on the price index for this time candle. And at this, you know, for this candle, the point of control was right here where these yellow lines are. If you check color dominant side, it's going to split them up. So you're going to see where the point of control for the buyers was compared to the point of the control compared to the point of control for the sellers. I like to just have the point of control for the candle, so I personally keep that one off. Okay, now we're getting into the kind of visual settings, and I don't know if my default is a little bit different than it comes out of the box, so you might want to look through some of these and just kind of double check that it's the way you like it, but the candle body outline is just going to be this, so you don't even have to have it on there. You could make it a you know transparent color or something like that, and then uh, so I just leave it simple where we have red and green, and then black, black would be the flat doji. So the box grid and the box outline is talking about these little boxes right here. So the box grid is literally this little horizontal space between. Uh, we'll make it something obnoxious so you can see. So it's these yellow lines right there. Uh, I don't really like that. I like to keep everything really... Uh, I don't want that to stand out. I want these imbalances and things to stand out. So then the same time you can have the outline be, uh, you, you can even have it completely go away if you want it. You can get rid of, you get the opacity down. A lot of times I will turn the opacity down on these things just so it's not glaring in my face. Because again, I want these numbers and things to stand out more than the boxes. Okay, so now these colors are what's going to be uh, for these numbers right here. The This green and the red, the color for negative strength and positive strength, that's the background color that you see in these boxes. So uh, the market was has closed here, so it's not that exciting, but you can see where it closed. We actually had a lot of volume, so it's showing that at this level a lot was going on. And then uh, for the buy imbalance and sell imbalance, 
I don't know if these are default or not, but this is what I like to use anyway, the cyan and the magenta. So uh, the buy and balance is cyan and the sell and balance is magenta. So that's where we're seeing that there was a, a lot of sell side imbalance here and some buy side imbalance on this side. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I like to have the bar statistics on down here. And what that is, is this little table. And there's a lot of information. I think it's a bit much. I'll show you which ones I like to focus on. But what this is doing is for each one of these candles, it's showing you the statistics that went on inside of that candle. So we have the number of trades and the volume, which are technically different because some of these trades are for more than one contract. So uh, that's why the, the number of trades is probably gonna be smaller than the actual volume because that's the full number of contracts that were moved. And then this is the, the number of buy aggressors and sell aggressors over here. And then that's that cumulative number that I was telling you about. You take the buy volume and you subtract the sell volume. And that median number that's in the middle is the delta. So the delta for this particular bar is 10. That's not really exciting. A lot of times these will be, uh, you know, over a thousand when things are really exciting in the ES index. You can also have the percent turned on. And then the cumulative delta. This is going to be for all day. This is accumulating all day long. What has the delta been? And this is cumulative for every single one of these bars. So we're adding all the way across here for each one of these, what the total cumulative buy volume is, and then subtracting the total cumulative sell volume for the entire session. And then it'll also give you the minimum and the maximum. So some of that is kind of inf interesting information. Some of it's a little bit redundant. A lot of times I won't have trades and volume on because that's a little bit redundant. I don't really care about the delta percent, but I do like having the delta for the bar and the cumulative delta. The minimum and max, I mean, some, when I have, uh, I, when I need more space on my screen, I don't really mess with that, to be honest. So auto scale is just gonna make sure that we stay on the, on the chart where we can see all the candles. And then if you want to, you can center the price on the scale. And what that does is price is up here right now. And if I hit apply, it's gonna squish it down so that that always stays in the middle. The reason I don't like that on this chart is we need it to take up as much space as possible. Obviously, there's a lot of numbers on this chart and this is a full size big screen right now. So uh, yeah, we're gonna want that to uh, have as much space as we can possibly give to it. You can still have your trades turned on and all that. I personally think that's way too much for this chart, so I don't mess with that. But that is how you turn on the most very basic volumetric footprint chart. And then you can start watching for things like stacked imbalances. Here's a stacked buy imbalance. There's three of them stacked together, really with that fourth there, because that almost, you know, this was still stronger than that side. So that's showing a lot of buy. And then you can start forming strategies where you're entering at these imbalances. A lot of times it comes down for retests and things like that. But these are the kind of information, these are the kind of things that we're looking for on a footprint chart. Since this is after hours, it's a little more boring, so I'll scroll back and let you see what this looks like at earlier parts of the day. And you can see this does end up needing to be squished around and resized a lot. Right now, I can read these numbers, but when you start having a really strong trend, these can get really, really small. And that's when I end up really zooming in tighter like this so that I can see these numbers more easily. So there is a lot of this that goes on during the day. You can also go down to smaller time frames, And then another little tip that I have for you here, and I'm gonna get where this is a little less volatile, just so you can get a better view. This little guy right here is gonna help with your bar spacing. So again, if you're looking for some, uh, some more screen real estate, you can start squishing these together and it'll give you a little bit of squish that way too. Of course, you can also just click and drag on the time bar down here. And you can also click and drag up here if you wanna get any of that. And then you can hit the F to reset. I don't know why F is reset. Someone help me with that. And then the arrow to get all the way back to brand new. So that's how you set up the volumetric footprint charts. And I hope that's helpful. See you next time.